Spring is in full swing. It is the early part of May. We have already harvested some potatoes, some garlic, tomatoes, parsley. Join us to see what else is growing and updates from our last tour. Here is our loquat. It is in the palm fruit family along with apples and pears. And underneath it, you see my collards are growing, my arrowroot's growing, and even this artichoke, it's slightly struggling. And we've also added more uh, vines along this uh, new trellis over here. We've got scarlet runner bean. I've got um, fuzzy squash that hasn't shown up yet. I've got a snake gourd and I've got uh, loofah over there. Our ornamental pot is just filling, filling out and our herbs around it is also doing well. And in our last tour, this mulberry bush was shorter than me. Look at it. <laughs> it's at least a foot taller than me. So it's incredible. So since our last tour, we added three different types of fruit trees and one additional blackberry. And this is the prime arc blackberry. Our bananas coming up. We included a new patch of wildflowers over here, bordered by garlic chives. And our marigolds are filling out too. This is one of our new addition. It is the Barbados cherry. <laughs> Look at how well our fig tree is doing. Our sweet potato pot is growing. This is our second new addition. It is a persimmon tree. Um, it's doing well. It has put out new leaves and it's growing, but it is dropping its fruit. But I guess it's normal, at least in the first year anyway. And behind me is the third type of trees that we put in since the last uh, garden tour. Pineapple guava. This was where the uh, bougainvillea was. <laughs> and look, this is our second mulberry. It's not quite as tall as the first one. And around it, uh, we added uh, oregano, just ground cover, as well as lemongrass and nasturtiums, in addition to marigolds just throughout the, the forest floor, the food forest floor. This is our katuk that Jonathan said was going to die. It did not. <laughs> our papaya is doing well over here. The Anna is doing well. The Dorsa Golden is doing well. So overall, things are just lushing out. Before we get into the raised beds, I want to talk a little bit about some other vegetables that we have out in the landscape. Uh, we have tomatillos over here. They've been struggling. We think that the vine borers, which normally go for squash, also happen to like tomatillos, or uh, we know that we also have mole crickets, and it kind of looks like both of them are attacking the tomatillos. So we have one tomatillo left that we'll show you on the way that's healthy. The others are struggling, and we'll deal with those as we can. Uh, we also have some potatoes in the ground that those are going to have to come up soon. You can see that they start to get droopy and brown and they start to look like they're dying. That is the foliage above the ground. That's how you know when it's time to pull them out. So we've got to pull those out. We've already pulled out some in a bucket. We'll probably have a separate video on those later. Okay, moving over to our beds. So this is our biggest bed. A couple of things that have changed since the last time that we've uh, taken a look at it is we do still have a bunch of cool weather crops like our brassicas and our leafy greens. Uh, they are starting to suffer the heat. Uh, that's one of the reasons we added the shade cloth. Uh, the shade cloth just gives us a little bit longer to get those vegetables. 
Uh, we've added a lot more of the marigolds. The nasturtiums are now full in swing, are in full swing. Uh, we've got watermelon that we're kind of using the brick to guide them so that they don't take root in the bed because they will take over everything if we don't keep them out. Uh, but we have the watermelon going. They're looking healthy. They've got flowers. Uh, we've got a number of tomatoes in the beds. Uh, these are some of the ones that uh, we'll be seeing in our tomato series. We have a lot of different videos either started or coming up about pruning, disease management, and the various things that you need to know about managing potato or tomatoes in general. We also have a number of peppers. So we have some Thai peppers coming in. Those are looking nice. We've got some jalapenos, uh, lemon jalapenos, which didn't do well for us last year, but they seem to be doing very well this year. And we've already had a couple of those. Uh, our lavender is coming in nicely. Uh, we found oregano lav lavender which is apparently tolerant of our heat here. A lot of lavender, especially English lavender, is not. Uh, but the lavender really brings in the, the bees and other pollinators, so that's why we wanted some. Here is our one really healthy tomatillo. Uh, it's actually kind of a monster. I've cut back about half of it. So this is the half that's left, and it is still doing very well. Um, constantly putting out flowers and fruit. Uh, all of this is new growth, if you take a look at the older growth, you can see that we have tons of tomatillos underneath everything. So plenty of tomatillos. Um, again, here's our, our lemon pepper we talked about earlier. We've got some more brassicas back here. Our parsley is struggling. It doesn't much care for the heat. So we'll probably end up having to pull that soon. And we have a couple other tomatoes. Most of our tomatoes are the big indeterminate types, but we have a couple of determinates for the summer because they handle the heat a little better. And we're putting those smaller ones in this big bed. We'll talk about the rest of the tomatoes when we get down to the last bed. Moving on to the second bed, uh, which is our first low bed, uh, we have our wildflower mix. Uh, this just kind of brings in pollinators and also hummingbirds uh, for the entire area. We have our kale is struggling with the heat. Our watermelon is finally starting to pick up because it likes the heat. Uh, and our strawberries are doing well. We have a number of little strawberries uh, that have come off the parents that will eventually move out into the landscape. On our third bed, or our second low bed, uh, we again have more of our cool weather crops on the bottom. Those are going to be phased out. We've got some peppers over on that side right next to the lavender. Uh, we've got some squash and some other beans up in this area. Uh, long beans that we've started a little while ago have already reached the top of the trellis and now we've added strings for them to climb across the trellis uh, just to give us more room for them to grow. They really like the space because they get absolutely huge and uh, just simply eight feet of trellis is not enough so we like the horizontal trellising at the top as well. We have arugula down at the end of that bed that is clearly going to seed. We're leaving that for the pollinators. Um, it's now a little bitter, uh, not really great for eating. Daisy does still use it in her salads, but I think that's about the end of its usefulness, other than bringing in pollinators. In the cucumber bed, we have four different kinds of cucumbers, two to three plants per section. Um, so these are going to be sumter cucumbers. Uh, we've got lemon cucumbers. We've got Chicago picklings, um, Mark Moore 88s. And all of those are doing quite well. We expect that they will fill up the entire trellis. And then once they reach the top, we'll probably add more strings to bring them over this way, just like we did for the beans. Our carrots are doing well, but they're not going to deal with the heat, so we're going to pull those out soon. And we also have a number of garlic that are left. Uh, we already pulled about half of the garlic. We have a little bit more. Uh, the half that we pulled originally was the ones that were really dying back. We got those out quickly. These we left to mature a little bit longer, and we're going to pull those out probably today or tomorrow. And then we have some garlic chives, more nasturtiums, and then we have another tomato plant down at this end. Um, I actually expected this to die, but it's just gone insane, so we're leaving it because it's putting out a lot of tomatoes. And speaking of tomatoes, that takes us to kind of our highest maintenance bed, which is mostly tomatoes. We have atomic grape tomatoes on this end. Um, interestingly, this plant started green and went red. This plant started black and is now going red. Um, so we don't know why they have one color or the other, uh, but we have tried them both. They're both very good and they taste the same. You really can't tell the difference once they ripen. 
We have three cherry tomato plants here. We have some Rutgers, some le uh, yellow pears, some beefsteak down at this end, and then way down at the end we have a couple of the Everglades tomatoes. You might happen to notice on some of them we are fighting uh, a little bit of a fungus. You can see it on the edges. Now that it's getting hot, it's not so bad, uh, but it really likes the wet. So when we get rain, it tends to blossom up. And we're pretty sure it's a blight. I'm going to be going through disease management with tomatoes very shortly, and I'll have a video for that. When I do, I will put a link to it up here. Uh, for the groundwork, we just have some more marigolds, some nasturtiums on this side, and then we have various little herbs and some leftover greens. Uh, we've got some lettuce still left, some chard, and uh, lots of various basils, including a fairly large one. And then the last of our vegetables that Daisy didn't cover uh, out in the main tour is our squash trellis. And our squash trellis, uh, we have a couple of squash that are doing really well. Those are generally our Seminole and our other Machata variety squash. Um, however, we have found, we kind of expected this, but we weren't sure, is that our squash is now getting hit by the vine borer. Uh, so we pulled two of them out this morning. We know that there's two others that are already infected with vine borers. We're probably going to lose about half of them, and we'll probably replace them with beans just so that we have something on the trellis. Uh, but that is something that we weren't sure if we would have to fight that during the spring, but the only way to find out sometimes is to try it. So feel free to try something. If it doesn't work, just learn from it and adjust for it next time. This whole trellis here is brand new and it's got a lot going on. We've got lemongrass over here, scarlet runner bean, morning glory, Okinawa spinach, uh, mammoth sunflowers. I've also grown bitter melons. We've got ragoon creeper, uh, arrowroot, galanga, just a lot. Not only does it provide food, but it also is a visual screen for us. Let's go check on the chayote. So here are our two chayotes. <laughs> they're climbing, they're making their way. I would have thought it would have grown faster, but they're still doing it. And behind the chayote and the marigolds, I planted some Edo root. And right here, this is my sweet potatoes, the purple sweet potato. These actually are not from slips. So this one and that one's are actually from the potato that I used to create slip self. <laughs> and look how well they do compared to the ones that I actually uh, started with slips. The ones that were for the potato that I use to generate the slips, they're much more fuller. And then we have some more lemongrass, three of them right here. And then our last one, <laughs> the bougainvillea stick. It's doing well. I have been uh, snipping off the tip, the root tip, just so it bushes out more. We hope you enjoy the spring tour. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Before you go, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the Anoli Garden and click on that bell icon so that you will get notifications when new videos are out.